Welcome to the course of Spring Boot with React.js. In this project, we are going to build an application which will be looking something like this. Backend of the application that we are using is Java along with Spring Boot framework. And for designing the front end of the application, we are using React.js. So this may look like a simple application, but in the process of making this project, you will be learning so many basic concepts of Spring Boot and React.js. And also you will be learning how we give a look and feel to this application. So let's have a look at what we are going to build and what we need for that. So the first thing that we need is a Spring Tool Suite. That is an IDA for writing a Spring Boot application. The second thing is the Visual Studio Code that we will be using for writing the front end of our application. That is React.js. If you are having any other editors in your machine, then that's also fine. Other things are you will be needing JVM, JRE for running the backend of our application. And for running the React.js, you will be obviously needing the Node.js, NPM and things like that. So we assume that you are already having a basic code editor for writing a front end and back end. And also we assume that you have the basic environment set up. So now let's look at the project structure that we have in here. So our project is divided into three parts the back end of the application the front end that is react.js and there will be an end user who is going to use this application so if a end user making a request he will be getting a ui right so in the ui he is making one request and the ui is our user service application so this user service application is nothing but it is going to fetch the data from somewhere and display it to the user so it is going to fetch this data from the back end okay so the back end of our application is a spring boot application this spring boot application is also going to face some data from a database that is a h2 database and once it gets the data from the database it transfers the data to the user service application and the user service application will transfer the data to the end user so now we are going to implement this in our practical section let's move to the practical section of this tutorial a spring tool suit and we are going to create the back end of our application so we will be creating a spring boot application so how do you create a spring boot application there are two ways to create one is by going to the spring initializer website and from there you can create it other simple way is by creating it in the spring tool suit you have to just click on the file click on new and spring starter project so basically that will give you option to create a spring boot project so this window will come you should be having an active internet connection let's name our application this is the backend so i will give user backend so this is the name of the application now the type here is maven the packaging will be jar and we are using java 8 version so the group id we have given com.technodev and the package naming we will give it front end and description you can give anything whatever you want after that click on the next button and in this section we can see that the spring boot version that we are going to use is 2.4.3 and we have to add some more dependencies to our project and those dependencies will be web and select a spring web the next dependency will be h2 uh, in memory database that we will be using for storing our users our dev tools so that we don't have to start our server again and again after making changes our changes will automatically get picked and we don't have to start our server again and again and the next thing is jpa So we have taken these four dependencies now click on finish button so after clicking on the finish button it will start downloading the dependencies from internet you can see the progress in the progress bar here and we will wait for the dependencies to get downloaded dependency download is completed and we have got a project here let's open the project and see what all things we have got as a spring boot starter project so first of all the pom.xml let's open it and see what is the problem here we will ignore this error that is some issue with the spring tool suit okay let's see what all the dependency we have got we have got a spring boot starter data jpa 
and the starter web dependency, the dev tools dependency, and the H2 dependency. By default, when you add this web dependency, a test will be generated. So this is all there in form.xml. Now let's see other folders. We have got a source folder where we will be writing our Java code, the resource folder, and the test folder where we will be writing our Java test. The Maven dependency that got downloaded as a part of the initial download, all the jars will be coming here. There are a lot of them. And the JRE library that is the Java libraries that is by default picking up from our local system and Java 1.8 is there. So for the Spring Boot project, you will be seeing annotation with the boot here. And we have added a dependency dev tools. That's why it is coming here. First of all, we will make sure that uh, our application is running fine and there are no errors. So for that, we will be going to run as and Spring Boot application. If our application launches fine, then we will ignore this error in the POM and we will move forward. So our application has started and we have a web dependency that means that our embedded Tomcat is also started on port 8080. That means that we don't have any problem with our application. Now let's move with the development of our services. We'll stop it. Let's check the source folder once. What all things we have got. By default, we have got a class which is having a main method and inside that we have a run method that is responsible for starting our Spring Boot project. First of all, what we want to build in our project. So we want to build an application which will be displaying the list of all the users. So for that, we need to have a users in our application. So let's define a class which will be having our users and we will name this class as user. Click on the finish button. Okay, so in this user class, we will be having few fields. The first field is a ID field that will be private, long ID, then the first name, the last name, and the email. Okay, we will be keeping only four fields here and we will be annotating this class with an entity annotation. And whenever we are performing any JP operations, it will consider this as a table. If we don't if we don't specify the table name, it will be taking the table name as user. But here let's specify our table name. And inside this we will give the name of the table as name equals users. Now in every table you need to have a primary key and ID is our primary key here. So we will annotate it with the annotation ID Java X persistence. And we don't want to assign a primary key every time manually. So we will keep the generation stat Z as auto generated, generated value stat Z, generation type dot auto. So it will automatically generate a unique ID and we don't have to worry about giving any ID. So for this table, we will keep everything as default, we will not provide any column names. So it will take the column name as first name, last name, and email as it is. The next thing we can do is generating the setters and getters for this class. Right click here and go to the source and after that generate getters and setters. And in this one we will select all and we have our setters and getters in place. Now we can generate a constructor for this. Again right click and generate a constructor using field and we will not consider ID because ID is automatically getting generated and click on generate. So it has made a constructor for us. Now organize the imports by pressing Ctrl Shift O on Windows and click on the save button. So our user is created. One more thing we will be keeping everything in a separate layers. So we will create a package and we will name that as a model and we will keep the user class in that model. And you can drag and drop this user class in the models package. Okay, now the next thing is our data access layer. We will be creating that in a package called DAO and this will be basically a interface. So the name of the interface will be user repository and click on the finish button. Remove this class and write it interface. 
and we will annotate this interface as repository so this will be responsible for performing any database operations and this interface will extend jpa repository and this t is the name of the table that is user here and this user we have to import it this is coming from the model the id of the user is of the type long okay so our repository is created and this layer will be used for performing any kind of default database operations okay now let's move to the next one that is creating a controller for accessing the data so that we will also separate it in a different layer and we will name that as controller layer and we will name the class as user controller now click on finish so this will generate a controller class we will annotate this class as a rest controller and in this class we will have a method that will be displaying the list of users so this method will be public and it will return a list of users okay and this we will be making a get method and the endpoint that we will expose is users list now obviously we have to return the type of user first we will import it and we will have to return the type user so and what operation we will be performing we will be taking the data from the database so our user repository is responsible for performing any database operations and we will auto wire this in our controller class and the class name is user repository variable user repo okay and using this variable we will be performing we will be performing the database operation to get the list of users so it has a default methods that is find all so find all method will be giving all the list of users from the database and we will return the same thing okay so whatever is returned from the database that will be coming in the form of a array list so we have to make this user as a list so list of users okay now save our application and one last thing that we have to do is we need to put some values in the database so here we are using the h2 database that is an in-memory database we don't have to install anything locally the data will be created once the application starts and destroyed after the application search down at the starting of application we need to feed something in the database that we can do it in our main class by implementing an interface that is command line runner it's a functional interface that is only having only one implementation and that will be having only a run method that we have to implement it so when this run method will start we have to feed some data into the database how do we feed the data we have to perform some save operations so so we will be making use of this user repository to save the data we will auto wire it the same thing that we have done here we will take this and we will keep it in our main application okay and now using this user repository we can perform a save operation user repo dot default dot save that is the method that is provided by zapier repository and the entity name the entity name is our user repo the entity name is our user so we'll be saving a new object of user with the constructor the first name the last name and the email so the first name we will give it as anything maybe tom last name cruise and the email anything you can give okay and when our application will run it will perform this operation and save something in the database that also we will see in some time let's add some more users okay so we have added these four users and we will save our application okay now let's go to the resource folder here and we can enable the h2 database how we can enable we have to provide dot h2 dot console dot enable equals to true okay and the next thing is we have to give the driver jdbc driver class name data source dot url and the url we will be giving is jdbc colon h2 colon mem colon test db just save it and we are done with our backend application let's 
run our application just by right clicking and going to run as Spring Boot app. So the application has launched up fine without any errors. And let's go to the database. You have to go to your browser and type in localhost colon 8080 slash h2 hyphen console. Okay, so this will open up this windows. And now you need to give the JDBC URL that you have given in your application. And we have given JDBC is to MEMDB test DB. We'll go and paste it here. Okay. Now let's test the connection. It says that database MEMDB not found. Okay. So you don't have to worry. You can just go to the application and in the logs, you will be getting a link for accessing your H2 database application. Okay. So database available at this URL. Just copy this URL and go to the database and paste it in JDBC URL. And now test the connection. The connection is successful. Click on connect and you will be able to see this users table. When you click on users table and select star from the users, click on run and you will be able to see the same data that we have persisted at the start of our application from the command line interface. Now let's go to test our application, how we can test the REST application. Default port for Spring Boot application is localhost 8080 and our endpoint that we have exposed in our application controller, go to the controller. So the endpoint that we have exposed is users list and we will give it here users list press on enter so after that we are getting the white level page error and we are going to check one by one what is the cause of this error no default constructor for entity so for the user entity that we have we have not defined any default constructor and that's why we are getting this error so let's go to our user class and define a default constructor and we have defined a default constructor let's comment it so in the user we have defined a default constructor now our application will automatically restart once we save it okay so application is again started and let's go to our web browser and click on refresh button so now we have got the list of all the users here we can see whatever we had in the database the same things are coming on the browser so this completes our backend of the service and our endpoint that is user list is exposed at port 8080 and in the front end of the application we will make use of this url to get the list of all the users and display it in the browser very well formatted manner so let's meet up while designing the front end of this application thank you